we got a vote. Before I show you the boat, and I think the boat is incredibly cool and that you're really gonna like it, but before I show it to you, why do we get a boat? Three reasons. Reason number one, uh, at Waterless, we make swimwear and activewear for a day on the water, and we have to test this stuff. We have to make sure that the products work well for you, that they get the job done, and a boat is a really, really useful tool to get out on the water and test things. At least that's the way I justify it in my, in my mind to getting a boat. Um, reason number two is I've grown up sailing my whole life. Uh, I've been sailing and racing mostly small dinghies, fast dinghies, foiling, uh, 49ers, um, all sorts of like small fast craft. Um, but I haven't really done any kind of mellow coastal cruising since I was a kid. And I have great memories of it um, with my family. And I want to do that with my family and I want to learn about it. And I thought getting a small boat would be a good, you know, way to dip our toes into coastal cruising and see if we like it. Uh, and then finally, reason number three is boats are incredibly good tools at bringing family and friends together. And our hope is that this boat's gonna, you know, bring our friends and family together. We'll have a lot of great moments, a lot of great memories. Um, and it's just a, it's just a really fun thing to do with uh, those that you love. And uh, we hope that we get to share it with a lot of people. So that's why we got a boat. Now let's talk about what boat we got. There are so many different types of boats in the world that figuring out which one works for you is the best design is pretty overwhelming. Um, what we found that was a great starting point was to create a list of needs, not wants, like needs, like things you have to have, and then using that list of needs um, to try to you know, filter out which types of boats, which categories of boats will work for you and which won't. So here is our list of needs. First thing is we knew we wanted to get a sailboat, not a powerboat. And the reason for that is we've, we've had powerboats in the past and we've noticed that with the powerboat, um, we tend to focus a lot on the destination and not so much on the, on the journey to get to the destination, if that makes any sense. And we really craved a boat that wasn't super fast, that was really comfortable, where the adventure from getting from point A to point B was the main experience, not actually getting there. And we felt like a sailboat would, uh, would be the best fit for that. Maybe the biggest design criteria was that the boat needs to be trailerable. And I realize this is sort of a point of contention for a lot of people, but for, for us, having the boat be trailerable was mission critical. And there's a few reasons for that. One, I have I've been driving trailers my whole life and I don't have any problem with trailers. So some people do, and I understand that. Um, the other is that we have a big space in our, our yard for us to keep a boat. And it's really expensive to keep a boat on a mooring here in Florida year round. And that's just not really the experience that we wanted. And the other part is that the cruising grounds here in Florida are like, there aren't that many and, and, and they're really far apart. And we have a lot of family in other parts of the country. So we thought, okay, if we had a trailerable boat, we can easily store it for cheap in our yard. And then we can take it anywhere in the country we want to visit family and to explore lakes and rivers and uh, other cruising grounds outside of Florida, especially in the summer when it gets really hot and stormy. And if you're gonna have a boat be a trailer sailor, um, you really need to have a rig that's easy to put up, right? So if you have to call for a crane to put your mast up every time you wanna go sailing, you're just never gonna use the boat. So having a, a really simple uh, system that a single person, that's the ideal part, a single person can put the mast up by themselves and go sailing um, is critical. That, that way you have no barrier to, to getting on the water. And if it's easy to get on the water, then it, it makes it much easier to use the boat. You're gonna use the boat more and it's gonna be a lot more fun. And maybe most importantly for us is a down below that you can sleep in for a couple of nights. Um, we do a lot of day sailing and we sail snipes and sail flying scots and different like dinghies um, where you go out for a day on the water and you're back um, before the sun sets. And what we really were craving was the ability to go out and camp for a night or two. Um, we didn't need like a, we don't want a big boat that has like all these complicated systems and creature comforts, like just enough to be comfortable um, for a couple of nights. And as part of that, you need to have space. So a big enough down below where you know, my wife and I can sleep, we have the dog, we can be comfortable um, and maybe cook some food, but like not much more complicated than that. Um, that for us is 
exactly the kind of sweet spot we're looking for. Not too big, but not too small, just that kind of middle ground uh, that enables you to go have some overnight adventures. And the final things that we considered when choosing a boat are uh, performance, aesthetic, and price. So for performance, we want a boat that's fun to sail, right? If you have a boat that's just kind of doesn't perform very well and it and it's not enjoyable the way that it, you know, kind of moves through the water, responds to the wind, that whole idea of enjoying the journey from point A to point B, it's not really going to work if you're just kind of sitting there thinking like, man, this thing is a pig. So a boat that is fun to sail, I think is critically important, at least, at least for me. Um, and then there's aesthetic, which is a little shallow, but Aesthetic, I think, is really important. Every time you look at the boat, you want to be like, man, that thing is really beautiful. I love the lines. I love the way it looks. Um, you know, if you have a boat that you're looking at and you're just kind of like, it's pretty ugly, um, it's going to detract from your ownership experience. Um, and I think that that's an important, more important than uh, people realize. So a boat that you think looks beautiful is really important, I think, to the overall experience of owning it. And then finally, and arguably the most important um, consideration, obviously, is price. So um, everyone has a different personal you know, circumstances that dictate how much money they can spend on a boat. Um, but universally, I think it's very important and to consider the idea of price versus value. And by that, what I mean is, and I've, I've owned a lot of smaller boats, what I find is um, if you spend too much money on a boat, if you kind of like reach beyond what you can really afford, um, you're more likely to have what I call like ownership guilt or like boat guilt, where, you know, the boat's sitting on the mooring or at the dock or on the, you know, in your trailer, in your yard, and and you're not using it. And you're just feeling so guilty that you're not using it um, because you spent all this money on it. And this can really like kind of itch at you and, and really kind of make owning a boat kind of like a stressful thing. And you, people say a lot like the two best days of owning a boat are the day you buy the boat and the day, the day you sell the boat. And I think the, that that whole like mentality has been created, for, especially when people kind of like overreach. They spend too much. They get a boat that maybe is a little bit too complicated, that requires a little bit too much maintenance, and uh, they find that the the anxiety and the stress of ownership outweigh the joy. So I think it's really important to keep it simple, um, to to be really um, careful not to overspend, um, only spend you know what you're comfortable with. So that, you know, on a day that you're you're not using the boat, you're not going to feel guilty about it. You're like, it's all good. I'll, you know, I'm going to use it when I use it. Uh, I think that's incredibly important. So um, without further ado, now it's time to tell you what boat did we get. We got a cat boat. A cat boat is a classic New England style sailboat that was used in the 1850s to the 1900s as really a working person's boat for fishing and transportation, you know, in, in shallow coastal waters. Um, until the invention of the combustion engine kind of took them out of commission for that sort of commercial use. Because of that, cat boat popularity really declined for many years until people realized that they make really great recreational boats for shallow water coastal cruising. Having a shallow draft is a key performance element of a cat boat. And by that, if you're not familiar, draft is the distance that the boat sits in the water. So um, the deeper uh, draft boat means that you have to sail in deeper water to not hit the bottom. Whereas the shallower draft means that you can sneak into all sorts of waters that maybe other boats can't go. And this was really common in Long Island Sound and New England and Maine um, because fishermen and, and people that worked on the water needed a boat that would allow them to get into really shallow waters. Another critical design element for cat boats are the beam or the width of the boat. Um, cat boats are really, really wide. Usually they're about half as wide as they are long, which gives you tons of space um, in the cockpit and down below. And with all that beam, it creates a boat that has a shocking amount of space despite it being relatively short. And it's full of very cool little things like, look at that wheel. It's just adorable. This specific type of cat boat is called a Compact Horizon, um, but it has a really interesting history. It actually evolved from a design called the Harishoff America, which was designed in 1971 by the famous naval architect Halsey Harishoff. Uh, but then in 2000, the design and the molds were sold to a Florida company called the Hutchins Company. 
and they took the design and did a little bit of modern uh, upgrades and changes that I'm really excited about. One of the most impactful performance changes that Hutchins did to the Harishoff America when making the Horizon was switching from a barn door rudder to a balanced rudder. So a barn door rudder kind of looks, it's this big rudder that sticks out the back. It's, it's a very classic design and it's very functional. Um, the downside about it is that it's prone to having a lot of weather helm, meaning that when the boat's loaded over, it can be really hard to turn it. Um, and that has to do with the physics of the of the barn door rudder and the design. Um, with a balanced rudder, um, it's a much, I would say, easier to steer experience. Um, the downside of having a rudder like this is that it sits lower in the water and then it can become a hazard for hitting the bottom. And the way that Hutchins worked around this is this very clever kick up design where there's a, a metal rod here that's super easy. So if you're getting into shallow water, you can just lift it up and you're good to go. The second big design change that Hutchins made to the America was adding a keelson, which is basically like a miniature keel here. And they have about, I think, 800 pounds of ballast in this. Um, and there's sort of pros and cons to it. Um, the con to it is that a classic cat boat will have more of a flat hull, and then the centerboard drops down from that. And the benefit of having uh, not having the keelson is that the, the boat has a uh, shallower draft. So the horizon, I think the draft with the centerboard uh, up is about um, two, a little over two feet. With the centerboard down, it's around five feet. Um, so there's a little bit of a cost there by having this. But the benefit of having the keelson is that the centerboard retracts into the keelson and it doesn't get in the way of the interior of the boat. For most cat boats that have a conventional centerboard, um, the centerboard goes right through here and it kind of divides the entire living quarters in half. Um, and one thing that's really cool about the modified Compact Horizon design is now that we don't have this centerboard here, um, you can actually put a piece of wood and pads and, and connect this into make one big bed, which for us, you know, my wife really likes to cuddle. We have the dog in the middle. That was like a really big plus um, as opposed to like having us to have to sleep on separate sides with like some big wall between us of the centerboard. And besides those big changes, uh, Hutchins has also added a bunch of fun quirks and features that are not standard on regular cat boats, including a little bow sprit with an anchor mount and anchor sword system, a boom gallows to hold the mast and the boom up above the cockpit, a small and extremely efficient little Yanmar diesel engine inboard to propel the boat and provide it electricity and power through its alternator. And probably the most important feature for solo sailing is a hinge mast made of aluminum that makes it incredibly easy to raise or lower the mast by yourself um, for a quick day on the water. I'm really excited about this boat. Um, it's a 2006 model, so it's over almost 17 years old, but in incredibly good shape. Um, and that's sort of a testament to the build quality and even more so to the previous owner. So we are the third owner of this boat. And a shout out to Ken, uh, the gentleman we bought it, bought it from. He did an amazing job, kept really good care of it and uh, gave it a lot of love. And we're gonna continue that tradition and take care of her as well. Um, but we're gonna do a, a video series about this boat and be sharing with you the adventures we have along the, along the way. I've got a bunch of different ideas for things I wanna kinda tweak and, and mess with and a lot of adventure ideas um, that my wife and I wanna take um, down here in Florida, testing waterless products and uh, just you know getting on the water and having good quality time. Uh, if you guys have any interest in certain things you want us to cover, if you have any questions about the boat, um, just leave them in the comments below and I'll be sure to answer them. And uh, we're just really excited to share this adventure with you and uh, can't wait to get on the water.